What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're gonna be taking a deep look at all of the ammo types in Modern Warfare 2 to find out exactly how they work since the pros and cons don't give us a whole lot of information. And then at the end, I do wanna share my thoughts on which ammo types are best. Now before we dive into this breakdown, just a couple things to note. First off, I'm not covering any shotgun ammo types because they're totally different and just outside the scope of this video. I'm just covering ammo types for all of the other guns in the game. And second, this is all based on hand testing and therefore it may not align one to one with the coded data in the game because I can't measure things to the nearest millisecond. But having said that, all of this should at least be accurate enough for you to get a good indication of how these perform. And with that in mind, let's dive right into this and start it off with the frangible ammo type. Now with frangible, it just says that it inflicts a wounding effect, but it doesn't really let you know what that is. I did the testing on this and it turns out enemy healing time is delayed very significantly when you shoot them with a gun that's using this ammo type. The normal amount of time it takes from the moment you stop receiving damage to the moment that you start healing is five seconds in this game. Whereas with Frangible, that almost doubles it. It actually pushed it all the way to 9.7 seconds. And that's a very, very long time in a Call of Duty game. That will put you out of the fight for quite a long time. So this is actually quite a powerful ammo type and also a very annoying ammo type. However, we do have some downsides here. The first one is bullet penetration. And based on all of my testing with bullet penetration, it looks like they're using a tier or level based system. So different guns will have a different level of bullet penetration and that will determine how much damage they lose through surfaces. And with this ammo type, it seems to just downgrade your bullet penetration by one level. So one example here is with the VEL46 SMG, through a particular surface, I lost 44% damage without this ammo type, whereas with this ammo type, I now lost 80% of my damage through that surface. So being downgraded by one level is very noticeable, but of course, this only applies when shooting through surfaces. But finally with this, it also reduces our damage range by about 5%, which isn't a massive reduction by any means, but it is something you'll want to consider. So that's frangible, it's a great ammo type if you really want to annoy your enemies, but at the end of the day, you're not really gaining any raw killing power with this, and if anything, you kind of lose a little bit of raw killing potential. Next, let's have a look at hollow point, which we see on most, if not all, of the SMGs in the game. And with this, the first thing is we get a crippling effect, and there's a few things to point out with this. First off, this crippling effect will only work if you shoot enemies in the legs. If you shoot them anywhere else in the body, it's just like shooting them with a regular bullet. You see no crippling effect whatsoever, so it's kind of strange that you have to aim for the legs to make this work. However, what this will do to the enemy is they'll have this disorienting effect when you shoot them in the legs. You can kind of see how the screen shakes a little bit here. It's kind of like an ultra suppression sort of an effect. It is purely visual though, as far as I can tell. But on top of this, this crippling effect will stop an enemy from being able to sprint. So if you shoot them in the legs while they're mid sprint or mid tack sprint, it will immediately disable their sprint and now they'll just be moving at a full walking speed. When it comes to the downsides of this, it has a very slight reduction to our bullet velocity at only about 7.5%, so not even really noticeable on the 6v6 maps in this game. And once again, just like the previous ammo type, this will cut down our bullet penetration by one level, which again is quite significant. Overall though, I'm not really a big fan of this ammo type. I think it's a bad habit to be aiming at enemy's legs. Those legs are moving around so much, you're bound to be missing a bunch of shots. And more often than not, you're better off just shooting them in the torso and killing the player rather than trying to stun them, especially with how fast the time to kill is in this game. In either case, let's move on to the next ammo type. And this is the armor piercing ammo type, which first off helps with our bullet penetration. And as far as I was able to tell, this just upgrades your gun one bullet penetration level. So that is quite significant and a big upside in this game as well, since bullet penetration isn't quite as consistent as we've seen in some previous games like Vanguard. So this can give you a nice boost in that area, but it also allows you to deal more damage to vehicles as well as score streaks. And based on my testing here, the easiest result to show off with you guys, even though I tested this with multiple vehicles, this is with the Wilson. And without this ammo type, it took me a lot of shots to kill this with an LNG. This is with the 5.56 Icarus. Whereas with this ammo type, I was able to do it in less than a magazine now. And when you do the math on this, it turns out this increases our vehicle damage by about 40%, which is quite noticeable. And that is gonna be helpful in modes where there's vehicles or just for shooting streaks out of the air. As for the only downside on this, this is a loss of bullet velocity, but just like with the previous one, this is only about a 7.5% decrease to your bullet velocity, which again, on 6v6 maps at least, you're probably not going to even notice this bullet velocity change. So that's armor piercing, and I'd say this is an excellent option, primarily just for that bullet penetration increase. That can be really helpful in this game. 
Now let's move on to the incendiary ammo. And with this one, it's a bit weird. We don't have a consistent amount of burn damage that we deal to enemy players like in some previous games. Based on my testing, we're getting about four to six extra damage per shot with that burn effect that's applied after the bullet hits. And that does definitely add up over time, although it's not always gonna change the number of shots to kill. But on top of this, we get an improvement to our vehicle damage, and it turns out this actually improves our vehicle damage by about 50%, so this is a little bit more effective than armor piercing at taking out streaks and vehicles in the game. But then when it comes to the downsides of this, our bullet velocity is noticeably reduced on this by about 25%, and that is something that you will feel a difference with. Your hit detection at longer ranges will feel like crap while using this ammo type. And additionally, this eliminates bullet penetration. Even with an LMG on a thin wooden door here, I deal literally zero damage through that wall. So that's a pretty big trade-off as well, and this also reduces our damage range by about 10%. And as a result, when it comes to incendiary, we have quite a few big downsides on this, and therefore this isn't the ammo type that I'd just be randomly throwing on a class. If I'm using incendiary, it would be for a very specific purpose on a class setup. And outside of that, I wouldn't be touching this at all because it simply hurts your gun in too many ways. But then let's move into the overpressured plus P ammo. And this is the one that increases target flinch while reducing your recoil control. And when it comes to that enemy flinch increase, it looks like you increase the amount of flinch that they receive by about 50%. And let's just look at a few direct comparisons here side by side with different guns in your hand. Keeping in mind the flinch in this game is most heavily dependent on which weapon is in your hand when you get shot. And it doesn't matter nearly as much what the enemy is shooting you with. But you can see if I'm using an assault rifle, I don't really have that much base flinch to begin with. And this barely increases that. Like honestly, you're probably not gonna notice much of a difference if an enemy shoots you with one of these plus P rounds. However, I'm sure a lot of you guys want to see what happens against an SPR user. And you can see here, it definitely gives a noticeable increase to the flinch, although it is still very limited flinch. So this isn't like guaranteed to throw them off target, but at least it improves your odds a little bit. And then finally, you're going to notice the biggest difference against actual sniper rifles because their base flinch is already pretty high to begin with. And therefore adding 50% on top of that is going to be very, very noticeable. As for the downside of the Plus P ammo, this is a reduction to our recoil control, and I just tested with a couple different guns here. The first one is the Lockman on the left there, and you can see it definitely increases the recoil a little bit, but it's still fairly controllable. It's not like this destroys our recoil control. And then with the Vel 46, once again, we can see a slight increase to overall recoil control. And therefore, if you are going for like a super accurate build, I probably would stay away from this ammo type but it's not like this is uncontrollable recoil the moment you put this ammo type on. Overall, when it comes to this though, against normal weapons in the game like SMGs, assault rifles, things like that, your enemies probably aren't even gonna notice a difference, so you're better off staying away from this. However, if you end up in a sniper lobby or even a lobby where a lot of people are using like SPRs or other marksman rifles and they're really annoying you, Throwing this on there may improve your odds of winning gunfights against them because that flinch increase is noticeable to those players. But finally, this leaves us with one last ammo type that we're covering in today's video, and this is the high velocity ammo. And with this, our bullet velocity is improved by about 45 to 50%, which is very, very nice. That is extremely noticeable. And I'm also just gonna reference this chart that I threw together for Warzone, but it still applies to any Call of Duty game that has bullet velocity. And this is effectively just showing you the range at which a particular bullet velocity is going to feel like it's a hit scan, where you don't have to lead a sprinting target. Anything in green, you don't have to lead that target at all. You just point and shoot right at the character model, you'll get a hit. Whereas if you're in that orange zone, you're going to have to aim at least on the front edge of your target if they're sprinting perpendicular to you. And then anything in red, this is where you have to start aiming off target and like dropping your bullets in to hit the enemy player. And that's where bullet velocity becomes a really big issue for you. So you want to try to keep your guns within the green. So if we just look at the assault rifles in this game, our muzzle velocity is just below 600 meters per second. And therefore that means we're going to be highly effective with our bullet velocity out to about 40 to 50 meters or so. But anything beyond that, it's going to start to become an issue. So even on the 6v6 maps in this game, if you're playing with a really long range build and trying to hold those long lines of sight, you may want to use this ammo type to improve that bullet velocity and make your gun a lot more effective out to like 60 to 70 meters, for instance. 
Now there is a slight downside with the high velocity ammo and this is a reduction to your damage range, but this is literally like a two and a half percent reduction, which is negligible. So overall, I'd say the upsides definitely outweigh the downsides with this. And especially for your longer range builds, I would highly recommend using high velocity. And I will be adjusting some of my class setups now that I know that this downside is basically nothing. And with that, that's finally gonna wrap it up for this breakdown of the ammo types. And before I share my favorites here at the end, I just wanted to let you guys know, for those that haven't seen, I've done a full breakdown like this for the laser sight attachments as well. And therefore, if you haven't seen that yet and you like what you've seen in this video, I will leave that link down below and I encourage you to check it out. Now let's hop into my favorite ammo types to use now that I've done all this testing. Like I just said, if I am creating a longer range build, high velocity is an excellent choice. If I find myself in a lobby against a bunch of quick scopers and snipers, I'm probably gonna wanna throw that overpressure plus P ammo on my gun. But outside of that, I wouldn't really consider using that. And then finally, another excellent option in this game that I will be using a whole lot more often now that I know the stats on everything. This is gonna be that armor piercing ammo, primarily just for shooting through surfaces a little bit more effectively. However, it is also a nice benefit that I can shoot enemy streaks down a little bit easier with this ammo type. As for all of the other ones, honestly, I would say they're either really niche and you would only use them on a very specific sort of setup, or I'd just stay away from them entirely. Like with the hollow point ammo, for instance, that crippling effect is just not worth the downsides in my eyes. Now, of course, those are just my opinions, and I wanna know what you guys think in those comments down below. What is your favorite ammo type to use in this game so far? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.